Tina Walenda has walked over dens of lions and tigers, between buildings, across rivers, and over a pool that contained more than 50 man-eating sharks, all in a day's work. Over the last couple of decades, he has performed inside and outside this building, sharing lessons of faith from the high wire that eight generations of Walendas have mastered. Those spiritual treasures are recorded in Walking the Straight and Narrow. Tino started at age seven. At 17, became a full-fledged member of the Great Walenda Troop. You are sixth generation, Tino. Yes. Just as a reminder. On both sides of my family, both my father's side and my mother's yes, side. Yes, Olinka comes from. And she comes from, a, my wife comes from a sixth generation heritage in the circus world as well. So we're steeped in circus tradition. I look at the pictures in this book, and we're going to be seizing some of them, and I see that you already have a grandchild hanging from what looks like a toenail of a family member, maybe I've, her mother. My granddaughter has been performing since she was uh, six years old with us on the wire, and she's her own star in her own right on the flying trapeze. Her father's family, again, another circus heritage, and so she flies on the flying trapeze, being caught by her dad. And she was the featured uh, performer. She had a character role on the Big Apple Circus in the United States uh, last season. How many grandchildren since we saw you? We've well, we have five altogether. Five now. Uh, Isabella is the oldest. She's t uh, 11. But the others are all a little bit too young to start perf uh, actually performing, although they've been in the ring. But they're all uh, range from four down to uh, a year and a half. So here's the question. I'm sure everybody wonders, you know, how much of this is nature <laughs> being in the right environment? Uh, nature, DNA, I mean, the way you're wired, you're in the family, and how much is nurture? Well, I think being in the ring all Being the in the right place, I think, is what it, it actually is. It's not DNA because you don't think so. there's no, I, I really, I've had my blood checked and there's no sawdust in my veins. <laughs> So it's just, uh, I've grown up in the circus, my parents have grown up in the circus, their parents have grown up in the circus and so forth. And so uh, you just grow up with that circus attitude, if you will, and getting used to being in front of an audience and being delighted by hearing their uh, applause and, and by their, the thrills that they might see. Now you have a nephew who put the Walenda name into every household last summer. When Nick crossed Niagara Falls, were you watching? I watched some of it, but I was performing in St. Louis at the time. Oh. So uh, in between acts and performing, uh, we'd get back and take a look at it at the TV and say what, what his progress was. But it certainly uh, put a little resurgence in the Walenda name. And, and, and the Walenda name has been a household name back in the, our roots in the United States here. So it's just kind of a, a booster, a booster shot. In your book, Walking the Straight and Narrow, you have a very helpful family tree. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Very helpful. Well, that's sort of a very small part of it. The, if, I, if we were to put the whole thing in, we'd have to use maybe the whole book. So, so just, just for interest's sake, Nick is related to you. My sister's through son. Through your sister. Mm-hmm. And uh, I received our actual, the Walenda family tree when I was in uh, Stuttgart, Germany a couple of years ago by my grandfather's brother. I didn't even, uh, cousin, I'm sorry. I didn't even know I would meet him, but he happened to come to the show and introduce himself and we got together a few times and he had the family tree. But, and I was shocked to see how many Walendas actually there were in past generations and uh, were active performers, even more than today. Now you've got your own A-team. I, I had forgotten about this. Uh, your own children, Andrea, Alex, Aurelia, Alida? Yes. All A's. Has there ever been a Walenda that hasn't taken to the wire? Uh, everyone has performed on the wire at one time or another. Some of them have branched off. A couple of them have decided that that's not what they wanted to do, or maybe they had a little bit of an aversion to the heights. And, but they stayed in the circus and still were performers. This is wonderful. I have to tell you, if I knew this, I forgot. The picture helped. I just got goosebumps. The Greatest Show on Earth, 1952, directed by Cecil B. DeMille. There is a picture of you in here as a baby being held by Betty Hutton yeah. during the filming of that movie. 
your dad's horses. And you know what we just figured out? I interviewed Alberto Zoppe mm -hmm. about his wonderful horses, his circus horses, mm -hmm. in my Barry days, 74 right. to 81, yeah. somewhere in there on television. Yeah, he, used, he was never here. He used to come up and uh, do shows in different malls around the country. Wonderful man. I don't remember a lot of names from that seven year period, but Alberto Zoppe. Well, he's certainly, certainly a memorable person. Two years ago, I think, we already mentioned your Guinness Book of Records, eight person pyramid. Yeah, and, and we went, we got eight person in the official Guinness Book of World Records. But uh, German TV, we had German TV and French TV and English TV there all at the same time. In the German version, I have it where we actually went on and added two more people and did a 10-person pyramid. But for some reason, Guinness, uh, in the official record book, they didn't give us credit for it. Oh, we need to start a Happens. campaign, Tino. <laughs> <laughs> but as I started to say two years ago, I think you pulled off another first in South Africa. Yeah, to my knowledge, uh, there was four of us, my daughter, Alida, my daughter Aurelia, my son Alex, and myself. We did four people on a tightrope between two buildings, 150 feet in the air, 150 feet across. Something that I think has never been done before. Mm -hmm. Interesting, a funny little anecdote about that is that the night before we were sitting with the director and producer and uh, they were saying what they wanted, the, the picture that they wanted to take and how they wanted to do it. And uh, at some point the director turned to me and he said, well, you know, Tino, uh, we're going to uh, uh, use Alex, your son, as, our, as the principal in it. And here I'm of course, the most experienced, so I assumed that I would be the principal. So I said, we're going to use your son, Alex, because obviously you realize your time is over. <gasps> so because he said that, and as you know, when you t do a commercial, it took two days, and we walked across that wire dozens of times. In the midst of all of that, uh, w between shots, to make sure that he knew that my time wasn't over, I took a few steps out onto the wire and did a headstand. <laughs> I thought of you. Uh, Jill Briscoe is the one who said, the gifts and the spirit don't age. <laughs> I have to wonder, though, does there come a time where maybe balance wavers? Or, uh, see, I can tell your look already. Is it don't even suggest that, right? Well, the, the thing is, as you grow older, you realize the risks even more. And so you begin to, and obviously, you begin to slow down. I started slowing down from the things that I did here at Huntley 15 years ago when we were in the back here setting up. In the parking up. lot. Yeah, yep. skipping rope and dancing and all that. I've, I let that go some time ago and I've d gone to a more mature uh, of doing things that were more suited to my, I don't want to say age, but that's what it is. And, uh, but then again, as time goes by, you realize that, that you have to slow down. Eventually there's going to come a time when, the time will come for me when my kids look me in the face and they say, Dad, we're not going to let you work anymore. Your life is too precious. Even, even high wire acts can be age appropriate. Right. You know, but uh, along with that, I'm going to say my grandfather was 73. Carl Willenda. Yeah, and he was still going very strong. And uh, unfortunately, he lost his life walking between two buildings in Puerto Rico. At the because age of, of 73. 73. Because of, but it was because of, not because of his physical abilities, but because of the way that the wire was put up. Wow. And I wonder if we could ever see the movie, The Great Willendas. Lloyd Bridges played your grandfather. He did, yeah. We'll have to, have to watch for that. Does it... It, it went around a, long, a lot. It was uh, filmed in 77, first shown in 78, and then it was shown all over the country. Mm -hmm. But uh, I haven't seen it recently. It's hard to get. Great pictures, though, that uh, you will see. Uh, actually, here I love this one of you with your grandfather in the filming. He actually had a neck injury as they began, eh? Yes, he did, and so he wasn't able to be part of the... Uh, we, we were the, uh, the doubling team. Uh, the actors, we had to dress up like the actors and wear wigs so that we would look like them. And my grandfather had a, an incident where he had a fall and he cracked his... Uh, a hairline uh, crack of his uh, neck. So that put him out of the uh, filming. Lloyd Bridge is a great look-alike, actually. Very good. He did a great job. Now, this is not just a great history, uh, circus history, family history. Uh, straight and narrow has a double meaning. 
and you have, you're really a pastor. You, you, you have Bible studies for circus performers. This book has a read through the Bible program in the back and spiritual lessons with a cute little motif of man on a wire <laughs> all the way through. Uh, you never work with a net, Tino. And I, I, I just wonder how you apply that to, this, to the Christian walk. Well, when we train, well, Linda's, I'm gonna say, we train without even the thought of falling. We don't rehearse falling. We don't practice in any way. What if this happens? What if that? When that time happens, you just have to deal with it on that particular basis and, re and your reaction has to save you. We rehearse and practice to stay on that tightrope. And of course, there's a, a point that we focus on at the far end of the wire, which is uh, uh, what gives us our part of our balance. Balance is uh, it's vision, balance is part feel, and it's part from your inner ear. But uh, basically, we have that point that gives us uh, our, uh, our point of reference for balance. And it's like that in, in life with the, with the Lord, you know. There's this uh, verse in Hebrews 12, too, that says that we need to fix our eyes on Jesus because he's the author and the perfecter of our faith. And I think too often maybe we as believers, we train for falling. We train for missing. But the, the, when you do that, you're taking your eyes off of the mark, off of that point. As believers, we need to focus in on Jesus Christ because he is the one that does give us the ability to make it through any situation. Life is not easy. Life has its issues. When I first became a believer, of course, they were saying, well, if you come across the line and you receive Jesus Christ into your life, every, all, your, all your problems will be gone. Well, that's a false notion because I found that once I crossed that line, all my pro a lot of my problems began. A lot of the friends that I had, they sort of turned their back on me. But uh, the one that was there all the time to keep me up and to keep me going, as I kept my focus on him, was the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me ask just for this close up so you can see the little, this is throughout the book. There's a man on the wire, words to live by. In this case, the quote is Oswald Chambers. The reason it is so easy to obtain salvation is because it cost God so much. It's a, it's a delightful book. It's, it's assembled so beautifully. I love the history, the pictures, the news clippings, color pictures in here and lessons for life live for God. You are coming back, Tino, with the family, and you are gonna be right inside the main gate at the CNE this summer. We're, all, we're very excited because, and I'm not an excitable person, but uh, last time we performed at the CNE was in 1966. And so this it's been is our way first, too long. Oh yeah, and uh, when I got the call to uh, have that opportunity, to perform there, uh, it was just a, a, a great uh, thing to do. So we're gonna be there entire run from August 15th through September the 2nd, right inside the main gate of the CNE, performing on the wire, uh, four of us, my, uh, uh, myself, of course, my, uh, my son, Alex, and my daughter, Aurelia. And then we have another fella who, uh, who grew up with my, uh, with my son, going to uh, youth group and things together. And all of a sudden, uh, he decided he wanted to run away and join the circus. So my son began training him, and now he's part of our team. Isn't it great you can still do that? Run away and join the circus. Yeah. Sarasota, Florida is home when you're there. Yes. And uh, we're going to look for you here this summer. And this delightful book is at our e-store, Walking the Straight and Narrow, Tino Walenda of the Flying Walendas, Lessons in Faith from the High Wire. Tino, we'll see you again. Wonderful. Lord willing. Stay with us.